Hi, you know what time it is. Neil Ratner, Rock Doc here with a story. Now, although not as flashy as Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, or Jimmy Page, David Gilmore still makes the list as one of the greatest guitar players of all time. And since David celebrates his 76th birthday today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about David Gilmore that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. All right. So David showed an early interest in music and was especially influenced by two singles, Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock and Elvis Presley's Heartbreak Hotel. Now, Gilmore was determined to teach himself to play guitar. He didn't have one. A neighbor had one. He borrowed the guitar from a neighbor and he got so into it, he never returned it, he later admitted, but so be it. Future bandmates Sid Barrett and Roger Waters both went to school nearby and the three became friends. Now David and Sid continued on to the same college and the two would practice playing guitar together during their lunch breaks. Obviously, they were pretty good friends. In 1965, David and Sid decided to busk around Europe, but they made no money, ran out of the little money that they had in Paris. Sid decided to go back to London, where a couple of months later, he formed Pink Floyd. David stayed in Paris for a while, and he worked there as both driver and assistant to fashion designer Ozzy Clark. <laughs> How about that? Now, eventually, he did go back to London, but in 1967, Gilmore returned to Paris, and while he was there, this time, he contributed lead vocals to two songs on the soundtrack of the film, Two Weeks in September, starring none other than Brigitte Bardot. Okay. Now, when David returned to London, Pink Floyd were in the studio. And he knew these guys, so he went to the studio and he wanted to see what they were doing. And he watched them record the song, See Emily Play. And of course, Sid was there and David couldn't believe it because for a while, it didn't seem like Sid knew who he was. Now, Sid was beginning to have mental problems at that time and, and certainly David recognized that. All right, now, not long after that, uh, Floyd's drummer, Nick Mason, approached David to join the band. Now, initially, Gilmore was hired to really cover for Sid, uh, who was going to remain with the band as a non-performing writer. But as we all know, that didn't work out at all, and it wasn't long before Sid was out. David was in as a full-time member. David started to sing a lot of the lead vocals. He was singing lead vocals with... Richard Wright, and the band started to become very successful, especially after Dark Side of the Moon in 72, and then Wish You Were Here shortly thereafter. But by the mid-70s, Roger Waters had taken greater control of the band. He was writing much of the material and singing lead on most of the stuff as he did on the album's Animals in 1977, and certainly his pet project, The Wall, in 1979. In the meantime, Gilmore and Waters were not getting along for a variety of reasons. There's been a lot written about their uh, relationship that you can read, and the relationship just went further and further downhill. And by even by the late 70s, Gilmore had begun to think that his musical talents were being underused. And in 78, he actually came out with his first solo album, David Gilmore. And that showcased his guitar playing and songwriting. And actually, some of the music that was written during the finishing stages of the album, but it was too late to be used on that album, was incorporated into The Wall, specifically uh, the song Comfortably Numb, which really, I think, was one of the last times that he and Waters collaborated. And then in 1985, Roger declared that Pink Floyd were a spent force creatively, and he left the band. And David assumed control of the band, and in 87, he produced the album A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Now, 
he felt that Floyd albums had become too driven by lyrics underwaters, and he attempted to so-called restore the balance between music and lyrics. And Momentary Lapse was followed in 94 by The Division Bell, and Gilmore's Pink Floyd, maybe some of you saw Gilmore's Pink Floyd, you know, toured both albums, and then that was it. It was a long period of inactivity. In 2005, uh, the original members of Pink Floyd, of course, minus Sid, reunited for the last time for a one-off performance at the Global Awareness event Live 8. Now, David has recorded four solo albums, all four of which have charted. And in recent years, like during the pandemic, David appeared in a series of live streams with his family, performing songs by Sid, Leonard Cohen, and he released the song, Yes, I Have Ghosts with lyrics written by his wife and musical partner, Polly Sampson. If you know the history of David, you know about Polly. And features their daughter, Romany, making her recording debut on backing vocals and harp. The great David Gilmore. Happy birthday, David. Uh, as most of you know, my company did the Dark Side of the Moon tour with the Floyd. I was fortunate to get to know them a little. I got to know David more than the others and his first wife, Ginger. Um, and uh, they were cool people. I liked them a lot. All right. Happy birthday, David Gilmore. I'll have more stories as the week goes on. You know where to find me around the Internet. And as I always like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. No, we don't want that. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you somewhere. There we go, real soon. Bye now.